welcome to our next differential equations lecture. I didn't see you there. As you could see, I was busting out some tunes on that grand piano. Let's go ahead and check out the differential equation behind musical scale. Hello folks, welcome to the next episode of differential equations. I'm your host Rifat Bari, Harvard Exoplanet researcher, perfect ACT scorer, and I have a perfect GPA here at the City College of New York where I'm studying physics. Today we're going to investigate this differential equation right behind me. This is called an exact differential equation, meaning there is an exact potential function, let's call it u, whose gradient dot with the rate of change of some position vector is equal to zero. And what this graphically means is that if I have some kind of a curve, if I have some kind of a curve like this, and I move along the curve, so I move along the curve's boundary, then at every point along the curve, there is a gradient, a point where there's a perpendicular. So here's a, here's a tangent, this might be the gradient, and we'll call that lambda f. And lambda f, the gradient, is composed of the x derivative and y derivative of this field, of this force field, with respect to, well, x and y. And perpendicular to this gradient, if we're moving perpendicular to this gradient, right, uh, that means we're moving along the contour over here, this curve over here. And so that's why, since they, these two guys are perpendicular, their dot product is zero. So that's the graphical kind of intuition you should have in the back of your head while we're doing exact differential equations. Now, how do, we, uh, how do we get started with this problem? Well, with most exact differential equations, you're gonna have a setup like this. You'll have an n term, so this is our n term in this case, and you'll have an n term. That's this term in this case. So you'll have an m term and an n term, and these m and n terms are really just the partial of u, some potential function u, with respect to x and with respect to y. And so if we take the partial of y of m and n again, but this time with respect to their opposite partials, instead of x with y and instead of y, x, then we'll have mixed partials, f sub x, y, and f sub y, x. And we know from calculus three that mixed partials should indeed be equal. And so if this condition, if this condition here is satisfied, then we have an exact differential equation. If not, well, we don't have an exact differential equation. This is the test that determines everything. So if m sub x, if m sub y is equal to n sub x, game over, we're good. We're good to do exact differential equations. If not, well, then that's a different story. We have to solve the differential equations using a different method, linear, homogeneous, the other techniques we learned, exponential, or you might have to solve it numerically, which is often the case in real life. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and do this. The first thing you want to do is check if m sub x, if m sub y is equal to n sub x. So this is m, once again, this is n. So on the right-hand side here, I'm going to check. So m sub x is a m sub y, I'm sorry, is going to be the partial of this term with respect to y. So that's going to be what? That's going to be 3x plus 2y. 3x plus 2y. And now, over here, the partial of n with respect to x is what? That's going to be, with respect to x is 2x. And with respect to y, the coefficient remains, that's y. And so, what are we going to have here? Well, check it out. 3x plus 2y and 2x plus y, they're definitely not the same. So we got to solve this in a completely different way. Good news is we can still use exact differential equations, except just like the linear equations from chapter 2.2 or whatever textbook you're following, remember with linear equations, linear differential equations, we multiplied both sides by an integrating factor and then we had e to the integral of that integrating, uh, and so the value of that integrating factor ended up being e to the integral of, of p of t dt, right? That was for linear differential equations. Now for exact differential equations, we're gonna follow a very similar technique. We're going to multiply, since m sub y, in this case, since 
m sub y is not equal to n sub x, we're going to make it equal to n sub x. And how are we going to do that? Well, let's, let me go ahead and demarcate the line of, uh, line of no return. m sub y, we're going to multiply both sides by some integrating factor mu. And this mu can be in terms of both x and y, but just for simplicity, we're going to hold it in terms of just x. Of course, if you hold it in terms of both x and y, you will get the same answer, just it's a bit more complicated. So, mu sub x times m, in, uh, take the partial with respect to y there, and same thing on the other side, mu times n, and we're going to integrate that with respect to x. Now, I didn't write mu, uh, mu of x, but you get the point, that's not going to fit on the board, but hopefully you get the point there. So, what this is going to expand out to be is a product rule, right? What is this? This right here is no more than a product rule. Product rule. And so we can expand it as such, right? So I'm going to clear this left-hand side here, and we're going to expand this little product. Okay? So, the product we have is mu times m with respect to y. So, just like the regular product rule, we're going to take the derivative of the first one with respect to y, derivative times the second one, times the first one, times the derivative of the second one, and this is going to equal what? This is going to equal same thing on the right-hand side, mu sub x times n plus mu times n sub x. Now, since mu only is defined, at least in our case, or defining it only in terms of x, this right here goes to zero, because mu sub y then would be zero, right? Well, mu, mu sub x has no y component, if that makes sense. And so now we're going to isolate mu sub x over here and bring this little term over to the other side. So we're, we're going to end up with mu sub x times n is equal to mu sub m times y minus mu times m sub x. Okay, hopefully you can see that. And so now I'm going to divide both sides by n, okay? So we're going to get what? We're going to get mu m sub y minus mu n sub x all over n. Okay, and now hopefully you're starting to get a sense of a kind of tingle of what we're heading towards. And so I can rewrite the left-hand side as d mu dx, and the right-hand side factor out that mu, I'm going to get m sub y minus n sub x all over o, n. Okay, there we go. So, now let me erase this side, and we can go ahead and plug everything in. So, what are we going to have now? Well, we know, let me make this actually look like a mu, we know that m sub y is this, n sub x is this. We can just plug in now. And so, we're going to have the following, d mu dx is equal to mu times, mu times, m sub y is 3x plus 2y, okay, minus n sub x, so minus 2x minus y. I'm going to write this on the next line so it can fit on the screen. So minus 2x minus y all over n. What is n? That's right here. This is our n term, if you recall. It's the second term. That's x squared plus xy, x squared plus xy. And now we can just simplify this. So we're going to have d mu dx is equal to mu times 3x minus 2x, that's just x, 2y minus y, that's just y. So we're left with x plus y on the top. On the bottom, we're going to factor out x to get x plus y. And what do you know? The top and bottom have a canceling term. So we're left with, uh, this is 1 over x, and so I can pull the mu to the other side because this is now a separable differential equation. So I have 1 over mu d mu is equal to 1 over x dx, right? And now you can see what, what's going to happen is I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to their respective variables. And so I'm going to have log of mu, log of mu is equal to log of x. And you can add in the constants, we'll just forget about them. Now we really just care about what our integrating factor is, right? Uh, if you move it up and down by some constant term, it's not really 
uh, relevant to our solution here. So what are we gonna have for this? Well, mu, hopefully, oh, you're not gonna see that. Let's go ahead and write it over here. Mu is going to be simply x. That's right, our integrating term is just a factor of x. And so now, if I go ahead and multiply both sides by x, I should be able to solve this as an exact differential equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to multiply mu, I'm going to multiply m by mu and n by mu. So let's go ahead and do that. My m is going to be x times 3xy plus y squared, giving me 3x squared y, 3x squared y plus xy squared. That's my new m. And my new n is x squared plus xy is equal to x cubed plus x squared y. And so now, if I take the partial of this term with respect to what? This is m, right? So take the partial with respect to x, well, y. And so if I take the partial here, I'm going to get m sub y is equal to 3x squared plus 2xy, okay? And for this term, this is n, we're going to take the partial with respect to x, right? So this is going to be what? Well, I'm going to have n sub x is equal to 3x squared plus 2xy. And voila, what do you have here? m sub y and n sub x are equal. That means this qualifies to be solved as an exact differential equation. So let's go ahead and do that. How are we gonna now solve this as an exact differential equation? Well, recall the graph, the diagram I drew in the beginning of the video. So in the beginning of the video, I drew the following trick. It's not in most books, but here's how you can proceed. Recall that m and n are simply the gradient components of some potential function u whose partial with respect to x and y are being taken. And all we did just now is take the partial again with respect to the opposite variables so we could test if the mixed partials were equal. Well, I can't believe I just understood what I was saying, but hopefully you understood what I was saying. But uh, now, since we walked downhill this diagram, we're gonna walk back up one of these slopes, whichever one is easier. We're going to integrate, for example, m with respect to x to find our potential function u. But after we do that, we're gonna be left over with some constant terms in, in terms of y. So then we're gonna walk back down the opposite hill and set the, uh, take the partial derivative with respect to the opposite variable and then set it equal to either m or n, depending on which term you're taking the derivative of. And then we can find what our constant term is that'll be our final potential function. So let me go ahead and do that right here, right now. So what am I going to do? Let's, uh, let's erase this right here. Okay, so now I'm going to take the integral. I'm going to integrate m with respect to x so I can find my potential function. So the integral of m and dx, this term is an indefinite integral, of m dx is gonna be what? Well, my new m is this right here. That's my new m. Let me write that down here. Hopefully you can see. This is my new m, this is my new m. Okay, so now integrating m with respect to x, we are gonna get 3x squared y plus xy squared dx. This is going to be, just read y like a constant, we're gonna end up with what? Oh, oops, I wrote an integral sign. So we're going to have 3x cubed over three, so that's just x cubed. And here I'll just have half x squared y, half x squared y squared, okay? So this is m dx, but there is a constant. And not just any old numerical constant, this is a constant in terms of y, right? Because we are integrating with respect to x, you have both x and y variables in here, so you're gonna get a constant of y. And so, because we get a constant of y, hopefully you can see that right here, we have to figure out what that constant of y is. So, we're gonna walk back down this side of the slope and integrate this with respect to, what are we gonna integrate this with respect to here? With respect to y, so we can set it equal to n. So, integrating this with respect to y, what are we gonna get? So, I'm going to integrate down here, hopefully you're gonna see that. 
So this is gonna become x cubed because y is now, x cubed is kind of like a coefficient now. And plus, uh, taking the derivative with respect to y here, I get 2y coming down from this power, uh, that using the power rule, this becomes two times half times x squared times y. That's just x squared y plus h prime of y. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to set this equal to what n is, so I can find out what my constant is. So x cubed plus x squared y, we're gonna set this equal to n. So we have x cubed plus x squared y plus h prime of y, and this right here is going to equal whatever n is. And n turns out to be x cubed plus x squared y. And there's nothing else. That means h prime of y is simply zero. So if h prime of y is zero, that means h of y must have been a constant. Let's call it, I don't know, c. So that means our final potential function, let's call it u, was indeed x cubed y, x cubed y, plus half x squared y squared, and there is, oh, whoops, y squared, and plus some constant. Okay, and so our final answer is going to be x cubed y, hopefully you can see this, x cubed y plus half x squared y squared is equal to, and now we want to set it not to zero, but to c, because when you take the gradient of this potential function and dot it with, uh, with the position function, with the velocity of some, uh, of some position function, then this right hand side will go to zero. And so this, ladies and gentlemen, is our final answer. So just to make it very clear, this is our final potential function. We're setting it equal to some constant. So folks, thanks for watching this episode of Differential Equations, live lecture from the City College of New York. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode and we'll check you out in the next one. Sponsored by Brilliant.org. Ambition plus MKO. Plus scaffolding equal learning. We believe anyone can learn anything. That's why our motto is memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. And the first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become, become the, the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love with math and science. science.